Good morning, everyone. I hope that your Sunday turns out to be a, a very good Sunday. I was impressed by the Lord to come in here this morning and do another periscope uh, similar to what I did yesterday where <clears throat> I would talk about the Sabbath. Since Hi, Erlene, you're the first one on. Good morning. Good morning. Um, in light of, of what Doug Batchelor had on Friday night, I wanted to do another, I wanted to do an, a, a, a scope on the Sabbath because I feel it's very important. I hope I get, I hope I get people in here this morning, but I got a feeling that a lot of people are not going to want to come in because of the Sabbath, but, you know, because they're going to be going to church today, but we'll see how many people I get. Um, well, I'm beginning to get people, people I don't have never heard of before, but let's, let I'm going to continue this Periscope anyway um, to see. Good. Thank you for sharing, Arlene. I'm going to I'm going to um, continue this periscope anyway, even though I don't have very many on here, and hopefully more people will come in. Um, I'll offer a prayer up right before I start. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that you be with this periscope. Let no technical difficulties arise, Lord, because the topic that I'm I'm discussing is one that needs to be needs to be talked about, Lord, because the world so steeped in sin and so steeped into Sunday, Lord, that they are not aware of that the Sabbath is very important. The Sabbath has not been a done, done away with, Lord, but yet people don't think it really matters what day to go to church on. We need to get this truth out, Lord, because I don't want people lost. I want people to understand the Sabbath is very important, and we're going to have to keep it someday. We're not keeping it to be saved. It's because we are saved. I just pray, Lord, that the people that want to hear the truth come in and hear the truth. And those that don't, Lord, will not even bother because we get too many distractions, Lord, and I want to keep the distractions out. We need to, need to silence those that are, that are going to be distractions. I pray, Lord, that the ones that come in here, everybody's heart will be created new. Me too, is Lord. Lord, I want my heart created in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Keep me grounded and into thy truth that I may never waver. And I pray, Lord, the, the people coming in here will do the same, that they will stay grounded in your word and never waver. Now I pray that you'll be with everyone that comes on this scope, now the live and the replay viewers later. Go with us all, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I did get a few more in here. Um, welcome, who came in here, is that Randa? That's Randa, good morning. Um, I think the, the topic, <laughs> My topic might be a little controversial this morning, and I may not get very many people in because of it. But you know, I'm going to keep going anyway, because this is a very important topic, and one that people don't really understand all that much. They don't understand about the Sabbath. And if anybody watched the Doug Batchelor's debate on Friday night, I watched a little bit of it yesterday on, on his Facebook page. And sad to say that Steve Gregg I don't know what is wrong with that man, but he is way out there. Um, and I watched the first, I watched both of their speeches. Um, but when it come to the 20, the 10 minute rebuttal, when Steve Gregg came back on, I, sh I stopped it because that man is so far out there. You know, he needs prayer. He doesn't realize what he's saying. Um, yeah, I know. When he said it was only for the Jews, I sat there and I said, well, where does the Bible say that? Because Doug Batchelor pointed out Mark 2.27, which I have mentioned many times that Mark 2.27 said it's for man. The Sabbath is made for man, not man, not man for the Sabbath. Does that verse say that it's just meant for the Jews? If it was just meant for the Jews, wouldn't God have said so? He would have stipulated in that verse that it was only meant for the Jews, but he did not stipulate that. He, he said it's for man. Um, yes, that's right. We are, we are going to keep it in heaven. And that's just the point. We're going to keep it in heaven since Isaiah 66, 23 talks about we're going from one new moon to another and from Sabbath to another. Shalt thou come to worship me, saith the Lord. Why can't we do it now? We're going to have to do it in heaven. People think that, that we're not going to keep the Sabbath in heaven. The ones that are, that are saved... You know, and don't keep the Sabbath now and may, may be saved. They think we're not going to keep the Sabbath in heaven. They're going to be mistaken. We are going to keep the Sabbath in heaven. Um, yeah, you know, I think the way he was talking, that's what I'm thinking too, Erlene. And it's sad because I wanted to listen to I wanted to watch it so bad since I missed it on a Friday night. Good morning, Lloyd. Welcome. 
I wanted to watch it Friday night, uh, you know, I, but I, I didn't, I got sidetracked and didn't get it watched, but I thought I'd watch it yesterday since I could, went on his page to watch it. But that poor man is so deluded. And the problem of it is, good morning, welcome. The problem of it is, he is so deceived that he is deceiving others. Um, that's true. We are spiritual Jews. But for him to say that the Sabbath was just given to the Jews and it's not meant for us Christians, I don't know where he, where he gets off saying that way. He did not take Mark 2.27 and interpret it the way I interpret it, the way the Bible, is actually the way that God interprets it in the Bible. When God says the Sabbath was made for man, it's in the entire world, Jews and Gentiles, not just Jews. There is nowhere in that passage where it says the Sabbath was, meant for, was made for the Jews. If it was made just for the Jews, he would have said so. But yet the people come back and say, that no, we don't have to keep the Sabbath because we're not we're not Jews, we're not spiritual Israel. We don't have to keep. But I I beg to differ. We do have to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is so very important because it's the test of our faith. People don't understand that it's the seal of God. It is the only commandment that has the three requirements: the name, the title, and the territory. The rest of the days of the week, Sunday through Friday. Do not have that, do not have any of those three requirements whatsoever. That's how important the Sabbath is. When you talk, when you look at the President of the United States, he, he also has that same seal, the name, the title, and the territory. It is very important. I'm not saying that I keep the Sabbath to go to heaven. I'm not saying that at all because that's not true. I keep the Sabbath to because I am saved, not to be saved. And yet people think that I'm trying to earn my way to heaven by keeping the Sabbath. No, I'm not trying to earn my way to heaven. I'm keeping the Sabbath because God has asked me to keep the Sabbath. He said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And also in John 14, 15, he says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. What does that mean? Love and obedience. Good morning, Mike, and welcome back, Erlene. You must be having troubles freezing up again. Welcome to those coming in and share this out to get this message out. When he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, that's all 10 of them. Love and obedience go hand in hand. Good morning and welcome. Love and obedience go hand in hand. You can't say you love God. Oh, you got you, oh, a text from Nancy. Okay. You can't say that you love God and are not obedient to him. That You can't do that because love and obedience go together. You can't separate them. You can't have one without the other. So these people that say they love, love God and they love Jesus, then why aren't they being obedient to him? Why aren't they keeping the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath commandment especially? Because when it comes to the other nine, they have no problem with them whatsoever you know they won't steal they won't kill they won't commit adultery they won't you know fornicate or covet or anything like that but when it comes to the the sabbath commandment they have a problem with it because they don't feel that they're under the law they because if people will come in here and say aren't we under grace though because paul says that i think in corinthians yeah he did say we're under grace but he didn't say that we have to do away with the law. Quite the contrary. Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law but to fulfill. People like to come in here and say, well, we're under the law. We're not under the law. We're under grace. That's true. Paul did say we're under grace. But what that means is we're not under the condemnation of the law. That's right. That's right. Grace is a pardon. And just because we're under grace does not mean that gives us a license to compete community. To commit, continue to commit sinning and dis transgressing the law of God. Um, that's right, not a license to sin. That's what people say. We're under grace. That's true. But we have. That's not a. That's not a license for it to, for us to communi to continue to to uh, you know transgress the Sabbath commandment because we know First John three four says sin is a transgression of the law. And those people that go to church every Sunday are transgressing the law of God. People are going to wake up this morning. They're going to get dressed up in their in their finest, and they're going to head off for 
for church because they've been doing it for years. It's not it's it's like a ritual to them. It's it's common for them to go to church on Sunday. Uh, that's right. The Bible says different. Exactly the same thing. You know, they're going to get dressed up in their finest, and they're going to they're going to head off to church, not aware that. They're going to church on a day that God never sanctioned. Good morning to those coming in. Welcome. That God never sanctioned Sunday as to keep the to keep Sunday. And that and you ask any pastor, a Sunday keeping pastor, why do we go to church on Sunday? And he'll say, Well, we go to church on Sunday because Jesus rose on that day. That's not the reason that you that they go to church on Sunday. They go to church on Sunday because Catholics mandated it as the as to keep Sunday. That's why they go to Good morning. Welcome. That's why they go to church on Sunday, because the Catholic says, well, you don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore, but quite the contrary. Where does anybody, any human being have a right to come along and say, we don't have to keep the Sabbath commandment anymore. We're not under, we're not under law. We're under grace. So you don't have to keep it. That's not for us to say. We can't tell God that we don't want to keep it because we're, we're under law. We're not under the law, but under grace. That's where we're tempting fate. We have no right telling God that. Uh, that's right. You're breaking the breaking the first. You're breaking the fourth commandment, and the Bible says, or we know if you break one commandment, you break them all. You, it's like a link in the chain. If you break a link in the chain, it's the chain is no more together. You pull it apart, and you can't put it back together. This is the same with the Ten Commandments. You break one commandment, you break them all. Because it's like that link in the chain. You pull the commandments apart. You have the first four for God, the last six for men. Like I said, the last six for men, they accept those all right. But when it comes to the fourth commandment, that's one that the people like to say that they're going to toss out. It's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And it's so sad. People need to understand the Sabbath is very important. Do you think that Jesus is happy with people rejecting the, the law of God and throwing it out. He's very unhappy. I'm sure that God sheds many a tear because people refuse to accept. Yeah, that's right. Sunday is sun worship. People don't understand that. They don't understand that. That's how Sunday got its name. It got its name from the sun goddess Ishtar. They're actually in essence worshiping the sun goddess Ishtar on Sunday. They're not worshiping God. When I go to church on Sabbath, I worship the, the Creator God. Don't, they don't realize. And the thing of it is, if and I, this is something that the Lord has impressed upon my mind, and I have heard this said many times, and I'm going to tell you. It has been said that if you reject the law of God, you reject God's Ten Commandments, the Sabbath commandment being one of them, God will reject you. And so I'm here to tell anybody that if you're, if you're rejecting the Sabbath commandment, God is going to reject you. He's not always going to strive with you because that because that's the way it is. Mark I read Mark 7 7 to 9 where it said that keeping keeping God's tradition. That's exactly what people are doing. When they go to church on Sunday, they're following man's tradition. <clears throat> that's right. There will be an abomination. Your prayers are futile. They're not even God is not even going to hear them anymore. Because you have turned your back on God. So I'm here to say that if there's anybody in here that is still going to church on Sunday, rejecting the commandment of God because you don't feel it's that important, stop going to church on Sunday because eventually God's going to reject you. He's going to toss you out. It's going to be like you've never been born. And I don't want that for anybody. If you love the Lord, you're going to want to keep his commandments. Because he, he says that in John 14, 15. And that's all 10. That's just not, that's not nine of them. That's all 10. Why is it easy for people to keep the nine, but, but hard to keep the fourth one? I don't understand that. The fourth one should be very easy to, to keep. I find it very easy to keep. It wasn't at first when I first heard about this truth that I'm telling you. It was hard for me to keep it because I was so used to going to church on Sunday. But once I started keeping it, then it became commonplace and it was real easy to keep it. The ones that are keeping Sunday, that's the same for them. It's commonplace. I think what it is, and this is very true, people don't like change. They don't want to be told that they have to do something different. And I think that's one reason why 
they refuse to keep this the fourth commandment because they, it is change it's something that they've never done before they have to change their their way of doing things and they don't want to do that they would rather just continue what they've been doing and not listen and that's so sad it's so very true it's like you said yesterday Erlene that it's no matter how many times you can read the Bible to somebody they're still not going to listen they're not going to accept the Bible for what it says that's sad the Bible is the Word of God it's not my word it's God's Word and why would people want to reject it so bad I don't understand it they're not getting into the Word of God and reading it like they should they now people will have a Bible and they'll sit it on their shelf and it gathers dust they don't pick it up maybe once or twice a, a week maybe if that and a lot of your Sunday keeping pastors don't even pick the Bible up and read it that's very very sad now as you notice my son yesterday he was reading from the Bible I got my I have a little pocket Bible a King James Version that I carry in my purse I got that out and I was following right along with him because when you when you know when they're reading the Bible you want to read it too and I tell anybody this once you start reading the Bible you're not going to want to stop it's good it's a beautiful 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 book and you're going to want to keep on going uh, no he sure doesn't Erlene he doesn't accept sun worship mark 7 7 to 9 says that because they reject the commandments of God thank you for the super hearts Erlene I can always count on you to give them thank you um, they're rejecting rejecting the law of God they're doing their own thing uh, yes he will if you ask God to forgive you I believe he will but the thing that is, you have to make an about face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. You you have to make an about face. Once you've accepted the, the uh, commandment of God, you've got to continue going on, on Sabbath. Like I said, when I heard it over 40 years ago, I decided that it was very important to me to start keeping it. I told my husband at the time, I said, this is something I've never heard before. And it's true. You're not going to hear what I'm telling you in the Sunday keeping churches. They just don't talk about it because they don't feel it's important. They don't, they, they're deceiving their people. They're deceived. So they're deceiving their congregation. And it's like I said before, the blind leading the blind and they all fall into the ditch. And that's very, very sad that they're all going to fall in the ditch and they're going to be lost someday. I don't want that for anybody. When people need to get into the Word of God, study to show yourself approved, to see what God is telling you. What does the Bible say? What is, what is thus saith the Lord? It's not what I say. It's what God says. Because what I'm tell, telling you is what God says in His Word. I have no reason to lie to anybody, and I'm here going to tell you that I am going to tell the truth no matter what. And if people don't like it, they don't have to come in here and listen. Uh, That's right, exactly, it's early, and praise God that you did accept the Sabbath. You know, when I accepted the Sabbath, I thought this is a beautiful message. Why didn't I hear about this sooner? But to Sunday keeping pastors, unfortunately, they aren't going to tell you. You know, you can ask them what day the Sabbath is on. They're going to admit that it's Sunday, but they're going to say, well, we don't, go, we don't keep Sabbath because Jesus rose on Sunday, and that's why we go to church on Sunday. What is that in the Bible? I haven't found it yet. I have not found one place in the Bible where Jesus says, well, you go to church on Sunday because I rose on that day. You, that, you don't do it. And like I said, um, oh, praise God. Praise God. That's wonderful. You know, and the thing that is, like, it's like I said yesterday, and I will say it again. Mm -hmm. Jesus kept the Sabbath in life, and he kept it in death. It was so important to him that he, not, that he did not rise from the dead on Sunday sabbath afternoon or sabbath morning he rose from the dead the first day of the week but you know when you look at the calendar easter falls fall, falls on a different sunday each year it's not on the same sunday so how can that be the true easter it's the day that they made easter the resurrection but it's not the true to today because it, it fall, falls on different on a different day every year the sabbath is different it falls on the same day of the week every week year in and year out yeah because of the moon and that you know and and they're keeping they're keep actually they're keeping the day of the moon they're keeping the day of the sun they're not following actually what 
actually Easter is. If you want to be truthful, Easter is not today at all. But they, but they made it today because of the moon. I think it's 40 days after the... I'm not sure exactly how it comes. But anyway, this is just a pagan day anyway, regardless of whether, whether it's Easter Sunday or just another Sunday. This is a day that is pagan. It is for the papacy. It is for the Catholics, not for Protestants to be keeping. The Protestant churches, they say they are protesting. But what are they protesting? They're going to church on Sunday. So for them, the protest is over. For us, the protest is not over because we are going to protest until the very, very last. Because the protest is not over for us. We are protesting the, the going to church on Sunday. That's what the Protestant means. It means protest. To call yourself a Protestant, you should not be going to church on Sunday. You should be going to church again, uh, going on a different day that the Catholics go. You should be going on the Sabbath because you are not protesting the Catholic Church at all. You are following them. We know that the, the Catholic Church has daughters. The Protestant churches that are following the Catholic Church are the daughters of the Catholic Church. They are following them every Sunday by going to church. Good morning, Jonathan. Welcome. They are going to church on a day that God did not sanction for them to go to church on. It is very, very sad that people keep rejecting the commandment of God by keeping the tradition of the Catholic Church. And that's exactly what it is. It is Catholic tradition. Why do you want to follow Catholic tradi tradition? People don't understand that they're, they're, they're bowing down to the, the, to the beast power. You don't want to bow down to the beast power. You want to accept God the creator. That is more important because that beast power is going to cause you to be lost someday. So people need to come out of their Sunday keeping churches. Come out now. The Bible says, come out of her, my people, that you partake not of her sins and receive none of her plagues. He says, come out of Babylon. Babylon is confusion. And that's all Sunday is, is Babylon. People are going to church in Babylon. That, and the world is steeped in Babylon. It's so sad. People need to come out before it is too late. When Jesus is coming back, I have no idea. When the National Sunday Law is about to take place, I have no idea. But it's coming, people. And if you're not ready for it, you're going to be caught. <clears throat> Jonathan, I have told you over and over again, this is not the day to go to church on. Why do you keep rejecting the Sabbath by going to church on Sunday? Come out of Sunday, Jonathan. It is Babylon. It is confusion. You will be lost someday if you continue to go to church on Sunday. If you keep going to church on Sunday and the mark of the beast comes, you will be lost. Don't be proud. You should not be proud to going to church on Sunday. I'm sorry that you, you feel so proud to go to church on Sunday. It was, it's not, this is not the Sabbath. This is not the day you go to church on, Jonathan. Continue to go to church on Sunday and you will take the mark of the beast because it's coming. I cannot stress this enough. I keep talking about this. I know I'm going to get flack in here. I probably won't get very many people on because of this periscope. Um, but, but I'm going to do it anyway. I want you to listen and listen carefully, Jonathan. Please listen. Don't comment until you've heard this. Please come out of Babylon. Don't keep going to church on Sunday. I have told you and told you and told you. You are rejecting the commandment of God, Jonathan. You have heard the truth in here. You are turning your back on God. You know what's going to happen? God is going to reject re reject you, Jonathan. He's not going to accept you anymore. He's not going to accept your vain worship. That's exactly what it is. You keep going to church on Sunday because the whole world goes to church on Sunday. The whole world has got it wrong. The Sabbath was yesterday. It's the seventh day Sabbath. Keep going to church on, on Sunday, Jonathan, and you will find out what's going to happen. I cannot apologize for telling you that because it's very, very true. You will be lost someday if you continue to go to church on Sunday. You have heard the truth in here. You're rejecting the truth. That is very, very dangerous. Stop rejecting the truth and stop going to church on Sunday. <clears throat>
I don't understand why you continue to go to church on Sunday, Jonathan. I have told you. You have asked me if Saturday is the Sabbath. I have told you. Good morning, Kevin. Welcome. I have told you over and over again, Jonathan, that Sunday is not the Sabbath. You have asked me if Saturday is the Sabbath. I have told you it is. You continue to go to church on Sunday. I don't want you lost. I don't want anybody lost in here. But people continue to reject the, the Sabbath. You reject the Sabbath by your own tradition. I don't understand that. Um, that's right. Friday is the preparation day. Today is just another day. Today is not the Sabbath according to the Word of God. That's what I go by. I go by the Word of God. I don't go by anything else. These people that are going to church on Sunday, you're not going by the Word of God. You're doing what you want to do because your family's been doing it for years. Just because your family goes to church on Sunday does not make it right. That's right. You're not obeying the law of God, Jonathan. God is going to reject you. I am here to tell you, you reject the law of God. You reject the Sabbath commandment. God is going to reject you. He's going to turn his back on you. It's going to be like you've never been born. You have to understand the Sabbath is still binding today. That's right. Today is the first day of the week. This is not the day to go to church on. This is not the day that God told us to remember. He said to remember the Sabbath day. You look on the calendar. What day is the, is the Sabbath? It is the seventh day. You go in the dictionary. You go into the encyclopedia. It says the Saturday is the seventh day. It is the Sabbath. There is only one Sabbath in the Bible, according to God, and that's the seventh day. You cannot make today the Sabbath. You cannot make it holy. You can't. <clears throat> I know the whole world does the same thing, Jonathan. They all think of Sunday. I used to be a Sunday keeper, too. But I no longer go to church on Sunday because I heard this message that I'm telling you and I realized I was going on the wrong day so I came out of Babylon. Um, the Sabbath and the moon fall on the same day. But you know, a lot of people, like I said, they don't understand what the Sabbath is all about. <clears throat> there, there, is, there is Saturday church. I know the whole world goes to church on Sunday, but that does not make it right, Jonathan. The whole world is going to church on Sunday, and that's totally wrong. The world has got it wrong. When God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, six days shalt thou work and do all thy labor, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of, the, of, of rest, people don't want to uh, accept that. They want to turn their back on it. They are being disobedient, uh, they're, so they're not right. No, you go to church on Sunday, you are not right. You're transgressing the law of God. You're committing Sin, you are breaking the Ten Commandments. You're breaking the Fourth Commandment. When you break one, you break them all. You cannot just continue to do it because you want to do it. It's very, very sad. The, the people think that just because your family goes to church on Sunday, that that's the day to go to church on. <clears throat> that's right, Jonathan. They haven't got it right. The whole world has got it wrong. I keep stressing that. That's why I keep saying Come out of her, my people. God said to come out of Babylon because you're not, you are lost. You're steeped in sin. That, no, they're not right. You've got to come out of Babylon. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to know the truth, get into this word of God. This is what the, I go, I, I tell you what the God says. I don't listen to any man. I did a periscope on don't listen to man, but listen to God. If you start listening, no, I'm not going to listen to any man. Because men are going to not tell you the truth. I listen to what God tells me. If, if I have to listen to a man to get the truth, I'm going to be so lost. I will not listen to a man. So that person that put that up there, no. Not, you won't know the truth by listening to man. This is what I follow. I follow the Bible. The Bible tells me the truth. Um, I don't care. I'm not going to listen to him. I'm going to follow the word of God. Uh, no, I'm not going to give him a listen. I'm sorry. I follow the word of God. I will not listen to a man that, that probably goes to church on Sunday. He's not going to tell you the truth anyway. Um, they got that right. The, church, the Catholic Church is the mother of harlots. You, you're exactly right. I am not, I'm not angry. I'm trying to tell you the truth. I go by what God says. I go to church on Saturday. He's not religious. Well, if they're, if he, yeah, he's probably not. I, if he's not religious, why should I listen to him? I follow God. I don't follow man. 
If I, and I follow God and I follow the Bible. If man's going to tell me to go to church on Sunday, no, I won't follow that. I'm going to turn my back on that. When man tells you to go to church on Sunday, don't go to church on Sabbath. Mm -mm, man is wrong. Man is lying to you. No, I'm not going to give him a chance. Sorry. I mean, I appreciate you putting that up there, but I'm not going to give anybody a chance that's going to, going to lie to me. I, I come in here to tell the truth. Um, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm here to tell the truth. If people don't want to accept the truth, then I don't know what to tell you because you cannot continue to reject the Sabbath. And I, and these people just now coming in, if you continue to reject the law of God and do your own thing, God is going to reject you. You can't continue to reject the Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath and expect God to accept you. He will not accept you. He does not accept your son worship. And that's exactly what Sunday is. Son worship. It's vain worship worship it's not worship that you should be doing you're honoring the catholic church you're honoring the goddess ishtar um that's exactly right i like that throwing off god's plan god's plan for salvation is for us to keep the sabbath we're going to be keeping the sabbath in heaven and sunday is not the seal of god the sabbath the seventh day sabbath is the seal of god we're to we're to have the seal of god in the end um Oh, well, we can't, you can't do your own thing on the Sabbath. Uh, well, it doesn't matter if you got baptized on Sunday or not, Jonathan. That's still not the, that's not the Sabbath. It does not matter. Uh, when is the Sabbath according to the Bible? The Sabbath is the seventh day. God said on, in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, this is the Sabbath commandment. Remember the Sabbath day. That is the only commandment that says remember. It doesn't, there's no other a commandment in the Bible that says remember. He says remember because he knew the whole world would be would forget. And they have forgot. They continue to forget. They don't care. They continue to they do their own thing. That's exactly what they're doing. You've got to come out of Babylon. The Bible says, Come out of her, my people, that you partake not of her sins and receive none of her plagues. People are in Babylon on Sunday. Um no, you are you no, you cannot cannot work on the Sabbath. The Bible says to work six days and rest on the Sabbath. We're not to work on the Sabbath. However, I will say this that there are doctors and nurses. Now that's different because <clears throat> they are doing good on the Sabbath. If it's if you're doing good on the Sabbath, yes. But to go and make money to do to do anything else, no, it's wrong. You shouldn't be working on motorcycles or cleaning your house on Sabbath or or whatever, or going on the computer, or watching DVDs and videos and things like that. Uh, you're not to do that on 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 the Sabbath. You're to keep the Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath is very important. Um, there are Saturday churches around. You just have to look for them, Jonathan. If you can't find a Seventh Day Adventist church, I suggest that you find a Sabbath keeping church, because I am here to tell you, um, Sunday is not the sabbath if you continue to go to church on sunday you will partake of them of uh the you'll receive the plagues you'll, you'll stay in sin you receive the plagues and you'll be lost because you will accept the mark of the beast very easily um um no when uh, sabbath keepers what we do is when we have fellowship meals on the sabbath we prepare the meal the day before we do not cook on the Sabbath. I do not cook. A, if, I, if I make a meal, if I have something on the Sabbath, it's a sandwich. I can fix a sandwich. Or I, yesterday I had a leftover um, veg, vegan pizza that I, that I had from the day before. I just heated it up. It was already cooked. I just heated it up. That's fine. But you're not to actually cook. You're not to put anything in the skillet. You're not to put anything in the oven. When I, when I fix for Sabbath meals for church, for the potlucks, I fix it the day before. But I put it in the oven that on Sabbath morning so it's nice and fresh. But it, just to bake it. But I'm not fixing it. I haven't prepared it. I have, I have prepared it the day before. So we don't do cooking and we don't do shopping on the Sabbath. Because you know what? That's doing your own pleasure. Yet, yet I have seen people that <clears throat> claim to be Sunday keepers. But you go to church on Sunday. You walk, in a, walk into Walmart or something. They're coming into church on Sunday. They're shopping on Sunday. So they're not really keeping any Sabbath at all. None. They're not keeping the seventh day Sabbath. And they're not even keeping the Sabbath that they claim to be the Sabbath. They're not keeping it either. 
They, they, that's right. They pollute, they pollute Sunday. Exactly. They're polluting God's Sabbath and they're polluting Sunday. Um, we don't celebrate Easter at all. We don't, Easter is just another day because it's pagan. Um, yes, I did. I sent it back. Yes, I did. Easter is pagan. It is from the sun goddess Ishtar or we don't celebrate Easter. There's a God, there's a goddess of, I'm called Easter. I think that's how they got, how they got the name Easter. And Sunday comes from the, from the goddess um, Ishtar. I don't, I don't, um, honor the goddess Ishtar. If you go to church on Sunday, you're honoring, honoring the goddess Ishtar is exactly what you're doing. You're honoring the goddess Ishtar. You're not honoring God. Um, you, you need to, you need to honor God on his, on his, uh, on his Sabbath. He's the creator. Why do you want to, um, why do you want to honor Ishtar? Why do you want to honor the Catholic church? Cause that's exactly what you're doing. When you go to church on, on Sunday, you're honor, you're honoring the Sab, you're honoring the goddess Ishtar. You're honoring the papacy, actually. And that's going to lead to the mark of the beast. That's what the mark of the beast is. It's worship. It's who you're going to worship. Are you going to worship God, the creator? Or are you going to worship the, the devil? you got God on one hand and you got the devil on the other. Do you realize that Sunday is the, is the devil's playground? When you're going to church on Sunday, you're honoring the devil as well. Why would you want to honor Satan you should not be honoring him whatsoever. Do not honor Satan. Leave him alone. He is not to be honored. God is the one to be honored. You are to honor the creator, not the creature. And that's exactly what people are doing on Sunday. They're honoring the creature, not the creator. You're honoring the creature, Satan, not God, the creator. Come out of Babylon. Did you partake not of her sins and receive not of her plagues? Yeah, they do. They mix pagan with Christian. And that's very, very sad. Um, it doesn't matter if you, if you're, if you go as a family, Jonathan, you're going on the wrong day. You don't go on Sunday just because your family goes to church on Sunday. That's not the true Sabbath. <clears throat> Sunday, Sunday is not the Sabbath. You are, Jonathan, you are honoring the creature and not the creator. God did not create Sunday to be going to church on it. He did, he made the Sabbath. He did not make Sunday as a worship day. You're not getting it. Get into the word of God. You people that are not getting it, get into the word of God and see what God says. I'm telling you what God says. He says, remember the Sabbath day. It's the seventh day of the week. He made, he w created the world in six literal days. And then he, and he, and he rested on the seventh day because in it, he, he made the world, Colossians 2, 8. Now, this better not be contrary to the Sabbath commandment because I won't read anything, Sabbath commandment, anything that, that's right. We don't worship Sunday because that's sun worship. I do not, I do not get involved in sun worship. I'm sorry. If people talk about sun worship, I don't get involved with sun worship because that's what people are doing. When you go to church on Sunday, you're involved in Sunday worship, in sun worship. I don't, I don't get involved with sun um uh, they have to, if they don't want to keep Sabbath, they're going to eventually, now, uh, understandable, there's a lot of people that haven't heard about the Sabbath. Those people, you know, if something happens and they, and they pass away, you know, they're not going to be lost. But if once you've heard about the Sabbath, you've heard the truth, and you continue to reject it, that's when God's going to reject you. You can't continue to reject the Sabbath. Because Hebrews 10, 26 says, For if you sin will, willfully after you receive the knowledge of the, the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. He's going to reject you. It's like you were never, ever born. So don't continue to reject the reject the Sabbath to go to church on Sunday because your family goes to church on Sunday. I'm telling you that just because your family goes to church on Sunday does not make it right. The world has got it wrong. The whole world is wrong. I'm going. I'm trying to find it. The world is com completely wrong. They have not. They're not right. If you continue to go to church on Sunday and that mark of the beast comes, you will be lost. I can't stress this enough because I'm very adamant about this, that people start accepting the Sabbath because you don't understand how you're hurting God. You're rejecting God because you're doing your own tradition. You're keeping man's tradition. Why keep man's tradition? Um, you have to. You have to step. You have to leave your family and step out in faith. That's very hard to do, but you have to do that. Um, I, I am, and um, my son are the only ones in our family that are, are well, my ex-husband is a Seventh-day Adventist, but 
My ex-husband and my son and I are the only ones that are, are Sabbath keepers in our immediate family. Because, and it's very, very hard to step, step out in faith, but you have to be willing to step out in faith. Your family is not going to save you at the end. You can't save your family and they can't save you. If you are going to follow your family and do what your family does, if they take the mark of the beast, you'll take it too. You're going to follow your family right into the pits of hellfire. Why do that? You have to be willing to step out in faith, Jonathan, and give the Sabbath, uh, give Sunday up and come to church on Sabbath. You can't stay in, in Sunday just because you want, because that's what your family's been, been, been doing the, for all these years. Um, Okay, Colossians 2.8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. That's a very good verse. Here's another one. Where it's tradition. Paul had t talked about it in, in Corinthians, where they're, you're following man's tradition. And I'm going to read that Mark 7, 7 to 9 again. I read it yesterday, but I'll read it again today because a lot of people don't understand what Mark 7 says. Because you have to understand what, what these are the words of Jesus now. They're not my words. They're Jesus' words. When they're in red, it's something that Jesus had said. And it's very important. If it was important to Jesus, it should be important to me too. It should be important to all of us. Mark 7, 7 to 9. How be it? In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. I'm going to stop right there. What is that verse telling you? They're teaching the doctrines of men. That's exactly what Sunday is. You're teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. That's the commandment that man has made that you keep. That's not God's commandment. He says to keep the fourth commandment, the seventh day Sabbath. And man says, no, we keep Sunday. We're going to keep the day we want to keep. And, and so I'm going to read that again. How be it, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. I read that today, yesterday, and I'm going to continue to read that to people, because that's exactly what you're doing. You're rejecting the commandment of God by keeping your own tradition. Why keep man-made traditions? They're not going to save you. They're going to cause you to lose your salvation, because once you've heard the truth and you reject it, that's very, very dangerous. You can't continue to reject the commandment of God. As I said, you reject the law of God, he's going to reject you. He's going to turn his back on you. It's going to be like you've never been born. Don't continue to reject the law of God. The Ten Commandments are there for a reason. God gave them to us on the, when he wrote them with his own finger. People like to say that man wrote the Ten Commandments. Man did not write the Ten Commandments. God wrote the Ten Commandments. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 no, Easter eggs and all that, they're, no, Easter eggs and the bunnies, coloring your Easter eggs and bunnies, they have nothing to do with the resurrection, nothing, that is all pagan, that is all it is, is pagan, I used to eat them all the time, I used to eat them because I love chocolate, I don't eat chocolate anymore because I know what it has in it, but I don't touch the stuff anymore, it has nothing to do with the resurrection, why don't they call it Resurrection Sunday? Why do they have to call it Easter Sunday? It's after a goddess named Easter. And Sunday itself was, was given the name Sunday after the sun goddess Ishtar. So it's like a double whammy. They're worshiping the sun goddess Ishtar on Sunday. And then they're going on Easter to boot and honoring an, a, a, sun, a goddess named Easter. My goodness, people, wake up. This is very, very serious. I am telling the truth here. I don't want anybody lost. But people... Just turn their back on the truth and they say, well, I don't have to listen to her or I don't have to do what the Bible says. I'm going to continue to work, go to church on Sunday. Keep going to church on Sunday and when you, and the mark of the beast comes, you'll be lost. It's as plain as the, as the nose on your face, it's as plain as the word of God tells you. you, you it's as simple as that. I don't want anybody lost. <clears throat> it doesn't matter, Jonathan, if you go to... Jonathan... If, you, if you're going to rely on your church family, your church family cannot save you. Sure, you're going to miss your church family, but so what? Your, your salvation should mean everything to you. If, you don't, if you're not going to keep the Sabbath because you're going to miss your church family, 
then woe unto you. That's all I can say. God will reject you. You cannot just say, well, I'm going to miss my church family if I go to another church or on another day. So what? You can make another church family by going to church on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is important, Jonathan. Don't throw it out. You're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. This is reality, people. You've got to start doing what the Bible says. We are in danger. We are in perilous times right now. It's very, very dangerous to keep rejecting the commandment of God by doing your own tradition. It's very, very dangerous. And if you keep rejecting it, God will reject you. Come out of her, my people. That's what the Bible says. If you don't come out of her, my people, Jonathan, you will be lost. I'm sorry to tell you. And I am not going to apologize for telling you the truth. Come out of Sunday worship. It is as plain as, as that. Bible, the Bible says come out of Babylon. My son talked about it yesterday. We know what it means. It's confusion. Babel is confusion. You don't stay in confusion. Come out of confusion. That's all Sunday is, is confusion. Your Sunday keeping pastors are not going to tell you the truth. They're going to make you think that you can continue to go to church on Sunday and you're doing just fine. They know the day of the week. They know that they should be going to a church on Sabbath, but they're not going to tell you to do it because they're going to, because they don't want you to leave their church because they're going to miss that money coming in the collection plate. So therefore, they're not going to tell you the truth. How unfortunate that really is. Because it's like the blind leading the blind. They're going to fall in the ditch and they're going to lead other people into the ditch too. They're deceiving people and they're, and, and they're deceived as well. And they're going, to, they're going to continue to deceive you. And it's sad. Um, it's, it's okay, Jonathan. It's all right. Don't continue to say that, say that, it does, that you don't want to uh, go to another church because you miss your people. It's okay, oh, hey, Jonathan. It's all right. I was plugging my phone in. It's all right, Jonathan. Those people cannot save you. You're, nobody can save you. Your family can't save you. Nobody else can save you. Only God can save you. It's a very, very important, Jonathan, and anybody else, that you uh, believe in God and you do what God says. Don't do what everybody else has done. You're following the world. You can live in the world, but you're not to be part of it. And I'm, and I'm sad to say, Jonathan, you and most of the world, they're all part of the world. You're living in the world, but you're part of it. Jonathan, you don't want to be part of the world. You've got to separate yourself from the world. And how you separate yourself from the world is you come out and don't do what the world does. You cannot continue to go to church on Sunday because you're not separate from the world. You're part of the world. Be ye separate, he said, God says. Don't se you separate yourself from the world. Just go to church on Sabbath, Jonathan. It's very, very important. If you continue to go to church on Sunday, you will be lost. I cannot stress that enough. It seems that people just aren't getting it. Jonathan isn't getting it. You've got to get into the Word of God and start reading it. Your, your family needs to get into the Word of God and read it. Um, if you don't start reading the Word of God, you're not going to know what God is telling us. His what he's telling us is very important. He didn't make the Ten Commandments for us to do, just to throw them out. He, they're very important. We're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. Why not keep it now? If you can't keep it now, you're certainly not going to be able to keep it in heaven. You, you're, you're not going to be, be ready for it. You're, you know, Because we're not going to keep Sunday in heaven. That's for darn sure. So if you, good morning, Cheryl, welcome. you got to start keeping it now. People don't want to understand that. They don't want to accept it. Um, that's, you, you, that's right. You put your trust in Jesus and he will guide you. He will help you with everything. But it's very, very important. Um, the Sabbath was a holy day. Now we should, should live every day holy. You, can't, you cannot live every day holy. I'm sorry. That person that just put that up there. You cannot live every day holy. You can't keep every day holy. The Sabbath is the only day that was holy. It was sanctified and set apart as a holy purpose. You cannot keep the other six days of the week as holy. You cannot keep holy what God never made holy. That, I cannot stress that enough. If you try to keep all the other six days holy, you cannot do it. You, you can't do it and, and it's, not, it's not holy. They are not holy days. They are just another day of the week. Today is just another day of the week for me. It's not a holy day. Therefore, I don't keep it holy. I'm coming on here and giving a periscope and, and keeping a, keeping, doing a religious scope. But I don't keep it holy otherwise. I don't worship on Sunday. I read my Bible, of course, but I don't keep it holy. I do my normal daily tasks on Sunday through Friday. You don't keep every day holy. 
God only sanctioned and set apart the Sabbath day as a holy for a holy purpose. You're trying to keep. You're trying to say that you can keep every day holy. Um, no, you haven't been right, Jonathan. You have not been right. I think you're finally getting it. That God has said in the in the Ten Commandments or in the Fourth Commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. I can't stress that enough. Look on your calendars. What is the seventh day? It is the it is the Sabbath. Where what is the seventh day? It is Saturday. However, God did not num name the days; He numbered them. But the days of the week have never ever changed. The Jews have kept the Sabbath from the beginning of time. They have never lost sight of the Sabbath. And for your information, people like to say that Sabbath is for the Jews. There were no Jews in existence when God made the Sabbath. I'll tell you that right now. He made the Sabbath for man. Mark 2.27 says, man was made for the Sabbath, not, not, man, for the, not man for the Sabbath. Um, that's right. You're right, Jonathan. I'm, I'm going to keep talking about it. That's right. Uh, you're not to, that's right. You're not to work on Sabbath. You're not to buy food on the Sabbath. You're to do, do that all the other days of the week. I went and did a little bit of grocery shopping on Friday. You do all your stuff the rest of the week. You clean your house or wash your car. And I washed my car on Friday. So I have it clean for the Sabbath. I wouldn't go, wasn't going to go out and wash my car yesterday. You do everything that you need to get ready for the Sabbath that week. Get prepared. In fact, we as seven, good mornings, Carrie. Good to see you. Welcome. As fact, we as Seventh-day Adventists, we prepare for the Sabbath all week long. We get ready for the Sabbath. Starting on Sunday, we prepare for it. Do the things that we need to do throughout the week so that we're not doing them on Sabbath. So that we keep the Sabbath the way God has asked us to keep it. Because we don't want to do our own pleasure and keep and do our own thing on the Sabbath. Because it's not keeping the Sabbath. Um, that's right. That's exactly what I'm telling you, Jonathan. You finally got it. You're getting it now, Jonathan. I'm glad that you're finally getting it. Yes, I'm telling people to come out of Sunday worship. Good morning, Carrie. Good to see you. I'm telling people to come out of Sunday worship. But God says the same thing. Come out of Babylon, that you partake not of her sins and receive not of her plagues. Because Babylon is confusion. What is Sunday? It's pagan. It's, it's nothing but confusion. You don't go to church today. On Easter, you don't go to church on any Sunday. I don't care what Sunday it is. You don't go to church on that day. You're honoring the Catholic Church. You're honoring the papacy. Don't go to church and honor the papacy. The Protestant churches that go to church on Sunday, why are you keeping Sunday? You're not protesting. Protestant means protest. What are you protesting anyway? You're not protesting a thing because you're keeping Sunday. Because you've been keeping it for many years. I did too. I kept it many years. Because I thought that was the day to go to church on. Once I realized that's not the day to go to church on. I never looked back. And I never went to Sunday church again. And I won't. God has commanded we keep holy. And he had, this is a command now. It's not just a, a something. Well I guess we could do it. It's a command. Command means you're supposed to do it. It's like rules of the road. These are rules that God gave us. We are supposed to do them. Not to tell God, oh, I don't have to do it. They say they can keep the other nine, but yet they won't keep the fourth one. If the other nine are important, then the fourth one should be just as important. But people don't feel that way. They don't think, they don't think it's as important because they don't feel that they have to keep it. God's not going to... Gonna, um, ridicule them for not keeping it no god's not going to do anything he's not going to take your free will away but he will reject you because you're rejecting the law of god he's going to reject you you are none of his if you reject the law of god you are none of his in order for you to be be god's you must accept the commandments of god you must do them the commandment commandments of god are in the bible they're for they're for a purpose they're not for us to just to take just to say well i don't have to keep any of these i'll just do what i want to do so some people do, they'll start committing adultery or they'll start coveting or they'll, they'll start, they'll commit murder or they'll, they'll steal. They'll just forget all about the Ten Commandments. Now, most people, most, most generally, will accept the other nine. They won't do any of the other nine. But when it comes to the fourth one, they'll throw it out. They'll, they'll say, well, it doesn't matter. We don't have to keep it. It's just as important. Don't break that link in the chain and do your own thing and do what you want to do and not keep the fourth commandment because you don't think it's important. If it was important to God when he said remember, it should be important to us too because we have to remember what God says is true. It's a law. And when he says something, he means it. God says what he means and he means what he says. 
And I don't want anybody to be rejected by God because you continue to go to church on Sunday because you're doing your own thing. Come out of Babylon that you partake not of her sins and receive none of her plagues. Because we know that mark of the beast is coming and is coming on us very, very soon for the simple fact that prophecy is being fulfilled before our very eyes. And when that mark of the beast comes, if you continue to go to church on Sunday, you'll take it by default. And you won't have a chance to turn around. But if you're going to turn around, you need to do it now because you won't really going to have a chance when it comes anyway because you've, auto, you've automatic, automatically accepted the mark of the beast by your actions and your thought process because your thought process is in your mind, your actions are with your hand. You've done it both ways. You've, you've done it with your actions and your thought processes. So I implore anybody that if you're going to church on Sunday, come out of it. Don't continue to go to church on Sunday. Today is just another day for me. People that say Happy Easter. Well, you can say Happy Easter to other people, but I don't consider it Easter. I don't consider it any day. It's just another day. It's a work day. It's a day that you need to do things around your house, which I'm going to do later. You need, you need to do things that God has asked us to do. Keep our houses clean or what have you. You don't do anything on Sunday through Friday, but work. You don't go to church on Sunday. You go you do your all your labors throughout the week, and on Sabbath is when you go to... Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. And on Sabbath, the seventh day, you, um, 2.16, um, I, somebody's probably trying to, trying to get me to, to say the Sabbath is important. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read these passages that are going, that are going to throw the Sabbath out. Um, <clears throat> you need to go on, you need to go on Saturday, Jonathan. Don't keep saying that. Uh, that's right. And the Easter egg and the bunny, they have nothing to do with the resurrection. If people keep keep saying that, that the Easter egg and the bunny have, have anything to do with the resurrection, they don't. That None of that has anything to do with the resurrection. Where does the Easter egg and the Easter bunny have anything to do with that? That was just something that people made up. <laughs> Sunday is not the Lord's Day. Exactly. You're right. Somebody's finally getting it. Uh, the... It, they might look pretty, but they're not. They they have nothing to do with the resurrection. They have nothing to do. Good morning, Jamal. Welcome. You know that that you you're. Why did people start coloring Easter eggs and buying chocolate Easter bunnies when it has nothing to do with the resurrection? Good morning, Jamal. Good to see you. It has nothing to do with the resurrection. You are not going to find it anywhere in the Bible where Jesus says, "Go to church on Sunday because I rose on that day." Or have Easter egg hunts. People talk about Easter egg hunts. And, uh, I, now, I will admit that I used to color Easter eggs back when I was a Lutheran. I used to color Easter eggs, and I used to buy chocolate bunnies. That's before I knew. But now that I know, I want no part of it. This is just another day to me. Just another work day. A day where I do things around my house, organize or what have you. I get prepared for the Sabbath. Because you know the Sabbath... Is, will come so fast again. The days are going very, very fast. As Jamal has mentioned before, the days seem to be going faster than they ever have. We are in Sunday now, and before you know it, the Sabbath will be here again. So we as Seventh-day Adventists, we start preparing for the Sabbath on Sunday. Get prepared and do what we need to do to get ready for the Sabbath again, because it's going to be here before you know it. Each day that comes goes faster and faster and faster. But I'm telling you, Today, they can call Easter Sunday. It's just another day. It's just a pagan day. You shouldn't be honoring the, the Catholics on this day and be honoring the sun goddess Ishtar or the sun god or an Easter goddess either. That's what you're doing. You're honoring those gods. You're not honoring the, the creator. You're honoring the creature. I can't stress that enough. Stop honoring the creature on Sunday and honor the creator by keeping the Sabbath day. Um, you're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. So why not keep it now? There's nothing in the Bible to say we're be going to be keeping Sunday. We won't. God never commanded us to keep Sunday. And it's like I've said before, he kept the Sabbath in life and he kept the Sabbath in death. It was so important to him that he did not rise from the grave on Sabbath. He rose the first day of the week, early Sunday morning. Because if you remember, Mary Magdalene went to embalm the body of Jesus. And when she got there, the stone had been rolled away. And Jesus was out in out there, and he, and she was scared when she saw the gardener. But the gardener happened to be Jesus, but she couldn't touch him because he had not yet ascended into until his father in heaven. And, and we talked about it yesterday in, in Sabbath school that you know that Jesus in his 
his uh, humanity could not roll that stone away. I believe that the angel Gabriel rolled that stone away and Jesus rose from the grave, but he rose on Sunday morning. He did not rise on the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath. It was that important to him. When he says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, he's not, he's not saying to forget it. He's, he knew that uh, people would forget. That's why he says, remember. Um, yeah, it is, it is April Fool's Day, but, it, you know, people could play April Fool's jokes on a lot of people. But, you know, this is just another day for me. It's just a day that I do my daily tasks, my work around the house or whatever I do, my cooking scopes and things like that. I don't do them on Sabbath because it's inappropriate. Uh, yeah, they, wrote, they joke about a lot of stuff. But this is just another day. Another day that we, that we um, do what we need to do to get prepared for the Sabbath you know, clean our houses or whatever. Um, that's right. That's, that, that, well, it, I don't care what you say from Friday to Sunday. It's not, but the, the Bible says that he rose early Sunday morning. He did. He laid in the tomb on Sabbath. You can, you can argue that point all you want, but I'm going by what the Bible says. He rose, he rose early the Sunday morning. He was in this tomb on the Sabbath. And I'm not going to argue with anybody on that. The Bible is not debatable. Somebody's going to debate the Bible. You know the Bible is not debatable. This word is true. If you get into the word of God, you'll see what I'm telling you. It's very true. It's not debatable. People like to come in and say, well, God said this and God said that. Get into the word of God and you'll know what God said. When I come in here, um, we don't know, Jonathan. Nobody knows. Nobody knows how long we have till Jesus returns. All I'm telling everybody in here is to be prepared for his returning. Because he is coming back. But in the meantime, you get into this Bible. Read your Bible and see what God has to say about the Sabbath. Yeah, we haven't got very long, is right. Um, we'll see what God has to say about the Sabbath. Read the Ten Commandments in, in Exodus chapter 20. That's where the Ten Commandments are listed. All ten of them are there. What God says about the Sabbath. Verses 8 to 11. And do you realize that the Sabbath commandment is the longest commandment in the Bible? It has 93 words, and it is the only commandment in the Bible that says remember. That's how important it is to God. He says to remember. He knew the world would forget. And look at the whole world. They're all getting dressed up in their Easter finest today, in their um, beautiful flowered hats and their flowered dresses and their men's suits. And, and yeah, we do. We show our loyalty to God by keeping the commandments. People are not showing their loyalty to God by going to church on Sunday. Quite the contrary. You're being disobedient to God. And like I said before, and I'll keep on saying it, you reject the law of God. He's going to reject you. You're none of his. If you're not going to accept the, the Ten Commandments, accept the Sabbath commandment, you're none of his. It's very important. That's, that is very important. Um, we don't know, Jonathan. We don't know from one day to the next. Each day that we come, we thank the Lord for the days that we have. We don't know what day from the next, if we're going to wake up that morning or not. We just have to be prepared for each day as it comes. And thank the Lord for each day that, that he gives us breath. I'm thankful for each day that the Lord gives me breath. That I can come in here and I can share on Periscope. I can do my cooking scopes. I can do my prophecy scopes. Health nuggets or whatever. Share with people. Because this is a time when we need to get the message out to, other, to the whole entire world. That's why I'm doing this. I need to get this message out because there are so many people that are still rejecting the Sabbath because they don't realize that Sunday is not the Sabbath. When you find out that Sunday is not the Sabbath, that means you need to turn away from it. You're going on a pagan day. You don't need to honor the pagans. Don't honor the papacy because that's exactly what you're doing. You're going to end up worshiping the beast. You're not going to end up worshiping God. You're going to end up worshiping the beast. At the end time, there are two classes of people. You have the wicked and you have the righteous. That's all there is. Are you going to be on the righteous side or are you going to be on the wicked side? I hope you're not on the wicked side. We want to be on the righteous side. And we know during the mark of the beast, you're going to have God on one side and you're going to have man on the other side. Are you going to take and worship God and keep the Sabbath commandment and have the seal of God? Or are you going to worship man and take the mark of the beast? It is your choice. God gives us free will. He's not going to make us choose him. He's hoping that we do, but he's not going to make us choose him. But I'm here to tell you that if you don't come out of Sunday worship and you take the mark of the beast, you're lost. You will, you will suffer the pangs of hellfire and you'll be burned up and no more. You'll, it's eternal death for you. So please come out of Sunday while you still can. 
because there's no time like the present to get ready to come out to to get to keep the Sabbath. Uh, I think we all are, Jonathan. We all need to be ready for him to come back because he is coming back someday. But we have to be ready for it. You know, I'm ready for it too. But are we really ready for the mark of the beast? You know, I'm not sure we really are. Um, um, we're you're. Yes, we are. We're still under the law. You, are you trying to tell me that the Ten Commandment law has been done away with? If you're trying to tell me that the Ten Commandment law has been done away with, then you are being deceived. You're, the pastor's deceived you. The Ten Commandment law has not been done away with. When Jesus came here, he said, I didn't come to destroy the law, to fulfill it. But, but that does not mean he did away with it. And you're telling me that I have to be quiet. I am not in church. I am in my own home. I do not have to be quiet. I can come on here and give a periscope. That person on here that said that, you are deceiving others by saying that. And you need to get into the, into the word of God. I am telling you that if you continue to go to church on Sunday, you're going to be lost eventually someday. But I'm here to tell you that the, Paul, Paul did say we're not under the law, we're under the grace. What he meant is we're not under the condemnation of the law. There is a difference. We are under grace, but we're not under the condemnation of the law. But just because we're under grace does not give us a license to continue to commit transgressing the law of God. Because God says in 1 John 3, 4, sin is the transgression of the law. So remember that. When you go to church every Sunday, you are transgressing the law of God because you're keeping Sunday when you're not supposed to. Uh, He did not free us from, he freed us from the condemnation of the law. He didn't free us from the law itself. We are not free from the Ten Commandment law. We're free from the condemnation of the law. You don't understand. We are still under the Ten Commandment law. We are going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. And I will read Isaiah 66, 23. That's a very important passage. And people like to reject the commandment. You know, and, I, and this is sad that somebody in here wants to, wants to debate the the, the Bible is not debatable, but you want to debate the, the law of God. I'm here to tell you that the law is here to stay. We're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. God said so. Even in Isaiah, he talked about it. The, the Sabbath commandment is throughout the word of God. It's even in the New Testament. If you, talk, if you look in Hebrews 4, he talks about the seventh day Sabbath in, the, in, the, in Hebrews chapter 4. People like to say, well, I won't keep the Sabbath because it's, it's an Old Testament covenant. We are under the New Covenant. But that does not mean you can't keep the, the Sabbath commandment. You keep the Sabbath commandment. It's, it's very important. I'm going to read to you Isaiah 66, 23. Let me get 66. I have the, I'm not, didn't go far enough. All right. Um, there we go. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, here I go. I was, here we go. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. What does he mean? We're going to worship him on Sabbath. We do not, we're not going to be keeping Sunday. We're going to be keeping the Sabbath. We're going to be keeping Sabbath in heaven. He said so. We're going to be keeping it from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shalt thou come to worship before me, saith the Lord. That's right. Church is on Saturday. Church is not on Sunday. The whole world has got it wrong, unfortunately. It's sad, but the world has got it wrong. And I don't know when they're going to get it right. But we know that there are going to be people that are going to come out of the Sunday keeping churches before Jesus comes back. We know that they're going to be people. But we also know people are going to go the other way too. That they're going to, We know that some of the people in our own denomination are going to go by way of Sunday. And that's sad. But I want to tell you from the outset that because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, I believe that all denominations will be saved. But I also believe that the people from all denominations will be lost, including my own. There will be people of my own denomination that will be lost because they, they take the mark of the beast and they weren't firmly grounded in the church. So I want you to understand that. And there is not an always, always, no once saved, always saved. People like to say, well, once I'm saved, I can do anything I want. No, you can't because your name can be written out, of, uh, be, t be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. So I want you to understand that. <clears throat> That's you. You are right, Jonathan. You are finally getting it. Yes, everybody does need to go to church on Saturday, and I expect you to start going going to church on Saturday too, Jonathan. You have heard the truth in here. Do not reject it because you are doing what Hebrews ten twenty six says. You're rejecting the truth of God. So many people come in here, and that's what they do. They reject the truth of God. I'm in here to tell the truth. In it. Ah, good morning, Philip. Welcome. If people want to reject the truth, that's very very dangerous. You can't continue to reject the truth of God. 
He's not, you're not any of his if you keep rejecting the truth. He said there remains no more sacrifice for sins. A good morning and blessings to you, Philip. Welcome. You can't keep rejecting God. If you reject God, and I'm going to say it again, if you reject the law of God, you're none of his. You can't continue to go to church on Sunday and expect God to accept you. He will not accept your vain worship. He will not accept you either. We know that people will be saved because they, some people will be saved because they haven't heard about Sunday. But those that have heard about Sunday and the Sabbath and refuse to keep it, those are the ones that God is going to deal with. So if you want to uh, accept the word of God, keep the Sabbath holy because you're going to have to at the end time. We're going to be judged by the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seal of God. It is the only commandment in the Bible that has that seal. No other day of the week has the seal. And somebody in here earlier talked about keeping every day holy. You can't keep every day holy. God only made the Sabbath holy. Today, this is not a holy day. This is not any other day for me. It's just a, a, another day. Another day to do my chores to get ready for the Sabbath. Um, be, I know they do take you, Jonathan, but that does not make it right. Just because your your parents have been keeping the sab have been keeping Sunday, excuse me, all these years does not make it right. The whole world has got it wrong, Jonathan. You have got it wrong. Your parents have got it wrong. Come out of Babylon. I keep telling you, Sunday is Babylon. It's confusion. The Bible says, "Come out of her, my people, that you partake not of her sins and receive not of her plagues." You need to come out of Babylon before it is too late. It is very important that you do. No, it is not, Jonathan. It is not okay to go to church on Sunday. No, it is not okay. Right now, until the mark of the beast has come, people, there is not a sun, national Sunday law. So people will go to church on Sunday and not be governed by the national Sunday law. But once that national Sunday law comes, and it is coming, you will not be able to go to, you should not be going to church on Sunday, or you'll take the mark of the beast by default. A lot of people have told me, well, I'll just wait until the mark of the beast comes. Um, no, it's not, Jonathan. It is not. You should, <clears throat> you should not be going to church on Sunday. You're finally getting it. <clears throat> you should not, you should not go to church on Sunday whatsoever. If you continue to go to church on Sunday, Jonathan, and you take the mark of the beast, you will be lost. This is very important. Because I, that question I ask, <coughs> is the Sabbath binding? Yes, it is binding. It is very binding. Now, if anybody did not watch that debate that, that Doug Batchelor had with that Stephen Gregg on, on, on Facebook on Friday, I suggest go in there and watch it. But you're going to be very disillusioned by that Stephen Gregg. I was. I got to the point where I just could not watch it anymore because he was... It was like he was throwing the Sabbath out, like the Sabbath meant nothing to him. You know, and he says we don't have to keep it. It's for the Jews. He is so deceived. But there again, the deceiver is going to deceive everybody else. There's the blind leading the blind, and they're all going to fall into the ditch. <coughs> <coughs> Why go on Saturday and not Sunday? Because Saturday is the Sabbath, Jonathan. Sunday is not the Sabbath. <coughs> No, Jesus did good on the Sabbath. He said it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath because the Pharisees were on him because he, he healed on the Sabbath. But he said it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus did not sin on the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath. People like to come in here and see Jesus sin because he healed on the Sabbath. No, he did not. He was sinless. He did not break the Sabbath. He did good on the Sabbath. He healed on the Sabbath. He performed miracles on the Sabbath. But it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So don't tell me that Jesus did not keep the Sabbath because he did. We are to follow his example. He set this he set the, made the Sabbath as an example for us. We are to follow his example and keep the Sabbath. I can't make it any plainer than that. If you want to really know what the Bible says, get into the Word of God. Read the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. Read the, read the Sabbath commandment. Uh, verses 8 to 11 and you'll you'll see what the bible has to say because i can't stress good morning hugh welcome i missed i missed you periscoping last night but i'm hoping and praying that you could do it again but it's very important that you get into the word of god and read it you can't just do what you want to do and expect god to be happy with you as i've read mark 7 7 to 9 before it's vain worship to go to church on Sunday. He's not going to accept it. Good morning. Welcome. He's not going to accept your vain worship. It's vain. You don't understand. You're keeping a pagan day. Pagans, 
You know, it's it's a day that was uh, that the papacy honors. Why go to church on the day that the papacy honors? You're following the papacy. You're honoring the beast. When you go to church on Sunday, you're honoring the beast. You're going to be worshiping the beast of Revelation 13. There are two beasts in Revelation 13. The first one is the rev is the is the beast of the sea, which is the papacy. The second one is the beast of the earth. earth which is the United States of America, a prostate Protestantism. You are going to be you are honoring the beast of Revelation 13 by going to church on Sunday. Don't honor that beast of Revelation 13. Don't call yourself a Protestant and keep going to church on Sunday because you're not a Protestant when you go to church on Sunday. You might as well call yourself a Catholic because you're nothing but following the Catholic Church. You're following the papacy. You're believing everything the Catholic Church has to say. You're not honoring God. You're disobeying God. First John 3, 4 says sin is a transgression of the law. You can, when you go to church on Sunday, you're transgressing the law of God. You're in direct disobedience to the law of God. Don't con continue to be in direct disobedience of the law of God. He's going to reject you. You're none of his if you continue to reject the law of God. I want everybody saved. That's why I do these. Uh, No, no, you should no. You don't worship idols. That, that's one of the commandments. Don't worship idols. Uh, no, they're not, Jonathan. You keep you're contradicting yourself, Jonathan. No, it is not right to go to church on Sunday. And I'm going to keep telling you this. Don't continue to go to church on Sunday because that mark of the beast is coming. And if you are going to church on Sunday, like I've said before, you will take the mark of the beast by default. Um, Yes, he is. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mark 2.27 says, 2 says, Man was made for Sabbath, not Sabbath for man. But there is nowhere in that passage where it says the Sabbath was made for the Jews. That's what that Stephen Gregg said on that debate with, with the Doug Baxter. Because I heard him say that, that the Sabbath is for the Jews. Because he quoted that, that, book, that passage. And when I saw that passage, and I know what that passage says, because I quoted it here many times, and I says, well, where does that passage say it's the, it's the Sabbath of the Jews? It's the Sabbath for man. It's for all men, not just for the Jews. He said he made the Sabbath and set it apart as a holy day. It's sanctified. We cannot keep any other day holy but the seventh day Sabbath. You can't keep today holy or tomorrow or through Friday holy for that matter. Somebody had said earlier that every day is holy. No, it is not. Sabbath is the only holy day that, that there is. And you can't tell God, well, I can keep every day holy. No, you can't. It's vain worship. You're worshiping God vainly because he only accepts the Sabbath worship. Don't, do not worship the creature. Worship the creator. Because when you go to church on Sunday or you try to keep any other day holy but the Sabbath, you are worshiping the creature. You are giving Satan the homage that he says that he, that he wants. Do not give Satan that homage because he loves it when you give him homage. That's exactly what you're doing when you go to church on Sunday. You're keeping that you're worshiping the creature and not the creator. Don't do that. It's very important. Why do you want to worship the creature? Don't worship the papacy because that's what you're doing. You're worshiping the papacy. You're keeping their you're keeping what they what they have sanctified and set apart. They have they have said no. We keep Sunday. If you want to if you want to know about the uh, the uh, Catholics, go back and go in and do some research on it. Back in 321 AD, Constantine instituted the Sunday for Sabbath. He says, no, we're going to change the, the Sabbath for Sunday. And you know, people have been keeping it ever since. I think they kept Sunday pretty much before that. But then when he more or less said, well, well we're going to keep it over the Sabbath. What right does man have to keep, keep <clears throat> say, well, we're going to honor Sunday over Sabbath? We don't have a right to do that. It's not our law, it's God's law. We have no right to change God's law and say, well, we're going to do what we want to do. That's the problem. That's what man's been doing this whole time. They've been keeping the uh, Sunday. And it's not a worship day. <clears throat> it's like I said before, those just coming in, Jesus kept the Sabbath in life. He kept the Sabbath in death. It was very, very important to him because that's why he did not. Good morning, Valerie. Welcome. <clears throat> he did not rise from the dead on on Sabbath morning. He kept the Sabbath. He ra he stayed in the grave until early Sunday morning, when Jesus when, when Jesus rose from the grave on early Sunday morning. He kept the Sabbath. It was that important to him. It's going to be imp important to us too when we're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. It'd be a lot easier to keep the Sabbath in heaven if we keep it now, you know. And I choose to 
worship the creator, not the creature. Because when you go to church on Sunday, you're worshiping the creature, not the creator. Oh, you may sing songs about Jesus, but are they really songs to Jesus? They're more to the creature than they are to the creator. Well, thank you for the super hearts. Welcome. And thank you for those. Um, you're worshiping the creature more than the creator. Don't worship the creature. Don't give Satan the, the, the homage that he, that he wants because he doesn't deserve any day at all. But that's what people are doing when they're worshiping on Sunday. You're giving Satan homage. You're actually worshiping Satan. You're worshiping the creature. Don't continue to do that. Come out of Babylon. It's confusion. You, everybody is confused. The problem of it is you're... So <clears throat> Sunday keeping pastors will not tell you <coughs> will not tell you the truth. They'll say, Well, Saturday is the Sabbath, but we worship Jesus because of the resurrection. Where in the world does it tell you in the Bible to worship Jesus because of the resurrection? I haven't found it. It's not there. You're not going to find it. That is false doctrine for them to say that you honor Jesus because there's of his resurrection. He never told us to honor him because of the resurrection. You recognize he rose from the dead, however, but we're not to pay him homage on that day. So yet the whole world will go to church on, on Easter Sunday that they call Easter for some silly goddess, some woman named Easter. That's how it got its name. And they, they go out and they color Easter eggs or they have chocolate Easter bunnies. Now you've proved to me from the Bible where Easter bunnies and eggs are... Uh, um, are synonymous with the resurrection they're not they have nothing to do with the resurrection of jesus that was all pagan that was brought in by the pagans none of it has any so so stay away from coloring easter eggs or or um eating chocolate easter bunnies and i used to i used to yeah i used to eat a lot of it myself but i don't do it anymore it's you're right there's a lot of colored foil you know and they make the boxes look very very uh, lovely so people will pick them up and eat them and I will admit that I did it uh, too but I don't do that anymore it's nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus they should call this resurrection Sunday don't call it Easter Sunday I hate that name because that's not the name it should be given that's a goddess name why do you guys want to follow a goddess you know and it's sad that most people only go to church on maybe sun, maybe Easter Sunday or go to church on Christmas. They won't honor, honor, honor God any other time, and it's very, very sad. You shouldn't be honoring him on Sunday in the first place. You should honor him on the Sabbath. Don't honor him on the Sunday. Don't worship the creature. Worship the creator. It's very, very important because, I, because in case you don't realize it, the, the Sabbath is the seal of God. We're going to have to have the seal of God someday. Either you have the seal of God or you'll take the mark of the beast. There's no two ways about it. There's no in-between. There's no sitting on the fence. You can't say, well, I don't choose the Sabbath. You, if, you either, if you don't choose the Sabbath, then you're choosing the creature. You're choosing Satan. So it's very important. I know a lot of people say they don't believe in Satan. Well, he very much does exist. He's here and he's a wily conniver. And he will do anything he can to destroy this world. So he's got the whole world thinking that Sunday is the day you should go to church on. It's not. It's not, it's not the, that's not the day we should worship on. So please, come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon while you still have the chance. Because you don't want to worship the creature. You want to worship the creator. I think I will call this a Periscope of Quits now so I can get my breakfast and read the Bible. But I'll sing the Sanctuary song to close out the, out the Periscope. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. As John 8.32 says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I thank you all for coming in, the live viewers, as well as the replay viewers. I hope you all have a blessed and marvelous day, and until we meet again... God bless. Take care and bye-bye.